Coming up, a major milestone, 5,000 rusty pilots back in the air. Starting them young, kids flying cubs, plus drones to the rescue. And flying a hot rod, we jump into the turbine legend. AOK -OK Live this week begins in just a moment. Celebrate 20 years with Sonics Aircraft by building and flying your dream. Quick handling, fun, and capable kit aircraft models to suit your flying passions. Get the best performance per dollar with Sonics Aircraft. This is AOPA Live This Week with Tom Haynes and Melissa Rudin. AOPA's You Can Fly program is getting more and more people back in the air. And this week, You Can Fly is celebrating yet another major milestone. Said you are the 5,000th rusty pilot to return to active flying. Congratulations. <laughs> Oh, wow, that's cool. That's really cool to know. That's our Rusty Pilot team surprising Ted Malone of Scottsdale, Arizona. Rusty Pilot started four years ago. Since then, more than 700 back-to-flying seminars nationwide. And more than 5,000 people have used a Rusty Pilot seminar to spring back into the left seats. I love it. I, I um, honestly, the feeling first time, you know, taking the controls and landing the aircraft, uh, it brought me right back to the student pilot days. That was just so much fun. I realized how stupid I'd been for, you know, letting it lapse. People go into these seminars thinking this is going to be really difficult and I'm not sure this is a great idea. I don't know why I signed up for the seminar. But when they leave the seminar, they, they start thinking, you know what, this isn't as bad as I, as I thought it was going to be. I remembered a lot more than I thought I was going to. And I, I don't think this is a problem. I think this is something that I can actually do. You'd be so surprised how quickly everything comes back. You know, that initial training that you go through kind of trains your body. You have so much um, muscle memory. And it's amazing how quick that just steps back. Well, if it's if it's something that you're considering as a, a rusty pilot, you ought to at least attend the course. Again, if you're an AOPA member, it's free to attend. Um, it can't hurt to, to sit in and see what you're missing. And you can find more about our rusty pilot program on this webpage, rustypilot.org. And there's a map of rusty pilot seminars near you. So I think Ted's experience is what I've seen a lot when I've run into people who have been through the program and been back, uh, and I've also talked to flight instructors who have flown with some really rusty pilots, <laughs> how quickly they, they really does come back and people have a great experience. It's really exciting to see uh, the crowds that come to the seminars when we do the Mid-Air Venture and Sun right. and Fun. It's always yeah. packed. It al is always packed. And one place you can find a rusty pilot seminar is in New Mexico at our Santa Fe fly-in. It's just one of dozens of seminars and workshops that will be offered there on the high desert. Santa Fe Fly-In is a little more than a month away, September 14 and 15. You can find out more about all of our 2018 fly-ins at the URL there on your screen. The AOPA You Can Fly program is leading the way for flying clubs. This year alone, 30 new clubs are up and running thanks to the program. This weekend, we hosted a number of club leaders at the You Can Fly Academy in Frederick, Maryland. We wanted to help them with an all-day workshop. Ses sessions dove deep into details on best practices covering everything from finances and taxes to engaging social activities. Michael Hangartner is the manager of the Flying Club Initiative. He says the event was a success and that the information flowed in many directions. There's just so much knowledge that's out there in different clubs. I mean, every flying club is different. They're all unique, they've all gone through different things. And so there's a lot of information and knowledge that different clubs have accrued that they can share with one another. If you'd like to join or be one of the dozens of flying clubs started by the AOPA You Can Fly program, head to our website. We have years worth of finely tuned, tested and trusted resources for you. Another part of the You Can Fly program is the high school initiative. The goal is to introduce students to aviation at an early age. AOPA Live's Josh Cochran has the story about a nonprofit that is hoping to give students using AOPA's high school curriculum the chance to fly for free. It's going back to the way flight training used to be, learning a simple, affordable, fun-to-fly airplane. It harkens back to the days of stick and rudder training. The Cub is just the quintessential trainer. It's a, a recognizable airplane. They see the yellow airplane with the black lightning bolt. and. Kids and adults of all ages can relate to the Cub. And the hope is that especially young people will relate to the Cub. That's the idea behind the nonprofit Kids Fly Cubs. Future plans for Kids Fly is to contact teachers that are science teachers around the area 
throughout Florida and South Georgia and get them the curriculum that AOPA has. Uh, and then if those students complete that curriculum, we'll try to show up to their airport and give them a logged flight lesson. If it's uh, as successful as we hope it will be, uh, then we'll expand it throughout the country. The program was kicked off when American Legend Aircraft decided to lend its first cub named Tweety to the nonprofit to use for flight training. Legend builds factory new cubs that fall into the LSA category. Legend Aircraft co-founder Darren Hart has a long history with cubs and he sees this project as a way to pass on what he has learned over the years. Yeah, we have to get you know, more children and more kids involved in aviation and uh, fill those gaps. There's a huge demand for, for pilots for the airlines and the military too. And uh, you know, it's always, you're just, you're just passing it on from what you did in your life and you want to pass it on to others. And that's what's important. Darren's son Luke is the first to learn to fly in Twiggy. He soloed on his 16th birthday. That was, it was a lot of fun. Um, it was scary. Like, he just jumped out and told me to go, and I just put it in the air before I had time to think about it. And that's what Kids Fly Cubs is all about, going back to the roots of aviation to get kids excited about flying. I think we're seeing a, uh, a need for pilots in all facets of aviation, from GA all the way up through the airlines, and we want kids to see that there's more than pushing a reset button on a computer, that you can actually go out and fly an airplane Josh Cochran, AOPA Live. You can find out more at kidsflycubs.org. The fourth peg of the You Can Fly program focuses on flight training. We need your help to improve the state of the flight training industry. The 2018 Flight Training Experience Survey is open through August 13th, that's Monday. Head to our website and tell us about your training experiences this year. We'll use the data to help make the whole process better. On the website, you can also enter the 2018 Flight Training Experience Survey Sweepstakes. There are tons of great prizes to be had. Find it all on the site. AOPA is stepping up for our drone pilot members. AOPA joined a coalition of drone industry and general aviation groups calling for the defeat of an amendment to the pending FAA reauthorization bill. It would allow state and local regulations of drones, and that would create a patchwork of regulations that would make it difficult for drones to serve in times of crisis. And here they're doing exactly that. The Menlo Park Fire District in California is using their drones to aid in recovery efforts from the state's massive wildfires. The team of drone pilots from the department is using drones to assess some of the 125,000 acres burned so far in the car fire. The drone images show how much devastation the blaze is causing. Hats off to the brave first responders fighting the blaze. And hey, drones aren't just for work though. One of the interesting parts of the night air show at AirVenture was the drone light show. You can see it was pretty cool. On our website, we have a slideshow featuring a behind the scenes look at the aerial feat. Just search drone light show. When we come back, it was built in a week and then flew. Find out what the one week wonder will look like. Plus, strap in and hold on, we fly the turbine legend. You always knew it was your perfect airplane. Now it can have the perfect panel. Garmin G500 TXI and Garmin G600 TXI, the next generation of flight displays. There are scammers everywhere. The folks in our Pilot Information Center have been getting calls about the National Aviation Center. They're sending letters to aircraft owners offering to renew the, the registration for only 65 bucks, but don't do it you can go online with the FAA and re-register your aircraft for $5. You have to re-register every three years. The FAA sends a notice six months before your registration expires. And they recommend you re-register online about five months before expiration to allow for processing and to get your paper registration in time. And you can pay the $5 fee with a credit card. And it really is easy to do. But hey, speaking of misleading, a would-be flight sharing service is spreading misinformation about an AOPA position on flight sharing. Flight Now is a small upstart that would like to create a flight sharing platform. The FAA shut them down, citing safety and regulatory concerns. That was upheld in court. In fact, it went all the way to the United States Supreme Court, which declined to hear the appeal. Flight Now is attacking AOPA, claiming we are fighting to prevent flight sharing, and that simply is not true. AOPA has always supported cost sharing for flights with others who have a common purpose, we also have no issues with how pilots communicate about their flights. We simply believe everything must be done with safety in mind. 
AOPA has worked collaboratively with Congress, NATA, NBA, and others on compromise language. And that's Section 516 of the House-passed FAA reauthorization bill and would allow flight sharing to move forward. This provi provision received overwhelming bipartisan support in the House of Representatives. Earlier this week, teams from AOPA, NATA, and NBA held a conference call with FlightNow executives where, again, we stated our support for the concept of flight sharing. Again, we have no issues with how pilots communicate, but safety will always be our North Star. FlightNow shared their blog post on Facebook. The comments there are not very sympathetic to their cause, many posters sticking up for AOPA's position. Matt Basford writing, quote, legislation seems like the only logical way. Case law is pretty clear. Not only does the pilot and passenger have to share the cost, they also have to share a common interest and motivation for traveling to the desired location. AOPA remains hopeful that FlightNow will work with the industry and the FAA to see their concept of public transportation brought to fruition safely and responsibly. There are many wonders during the week of Oshkosh, not the least of which is the one week wonder. Over the course of the week, this RV-12 went from nothing to airworthy and flying thanks to the help of volunteers. They also helped pick the paint. And now we know what it looks like. This is the winning selection from the Sherman Williams Aerospace Pick the Paint poll. The graphic artistry is the work of the team at Scheme Designers. More than 3,000 voted in the contest. Speaking of new airplanes, there were quite a few sold in the second quarter of the year. General Aviation Manufacturers Association has the Q2 numbers out and things are looking up. Airplane shipments are up 5% compared to the first half of last year. Much of that has to do with the demand for trading aircraft. And of course, as demand for airplane goes up, so does the need for engines. Continental Motors is pouring the foundation for their new plant in Mobile, Alabama. This is what it will look like when it's done. The 275,000 square foot facility will serve as an advanced engine and parts plant. There will also be an area to develop and experiment with new techniques such as additive manufacturing and automation. And someone has to be able to work on all those airplanes and engines. Delta Airlines is helping spur the next generation of aircraft mechanics. The airline's offering nine grants totaling $350,000. The money's going to technic technical colleges near their headquarters in Georgia to enhance maintenance training, support, and awareness. Finally this week, AOPA Editor-at-Large Dave Hirschman shows us what it's like to fly the ultra-high-performance Turbine Legend, a kit airplane powered by a Walter turboprop. The Turbine Legend has the sleek shape and military paint scheme of a classic warbird fighter, but it's a totally different animal. This kit airplane is designed to provide exceptional performance as well as the reliability and IFR capability of a modern turboprop. And owner and pilot David Peeler said it gives him the best of both worlds. It's kind of the, one of the old school fog panels. It's got a Garmin 530 and Garmin 430 in it and all the typical analog gauges, but it's really well laid out. It feels like a fighter. Big bubble cockpit, you know, bubble canopy. It's got that, the seat is reclined about 30 degrees. Thick with a throttle right where a typical, you know, Warbird or fighter would be. It's super simple, push button start basically monitor the star. The turbine engine is actually easier to operate. It's a low workload airplane. So once you get up and go, there's just not much to do other than take that one lever and go front and back with it. You're not waiting any length of time to let it warm up. If you get in there in the winter time, you're gonna crank it, close the canopy, and by the time we get to the runway, we're ready to go. Take off, we try to hit about 97, 98% power, 15, 10 to 15 degrees of flaps, because it is high wing loaded. And it's a lot like a Warbird, you need to let it fly off the runway. Best climb is somewhere between like 130 and 150 knots. If you really want it to climb, it can do four to 6,000 feet an hour. If you want to point the nose up and move the power up. Oh, back to idle, there's 80 knots with it right now. Crazy man. 70 knots, there's 60, 60 knots. Too shabby, huh? Wow. 
I'm typically somewhere between 12 and, and say 14 or 15,000. I think other operators are lending, take them a little higher, somewhere but the higher teams. We have oxygen on board. This typical rules require we, we wear it. But a lot of the legs are fairly short, a 300 nautical mile leg. And virtually by the time you hit your cruising out there, it's almost time to descend in that airplane. From the downwind, I fly a curving approach on the base to final, and I'm you're looking at 90 knots. Once you touch down, you can put it into beta and almost to reverse, and you can stop it on a dime. We have a little bit of positive pressure, and we're using more aileron pressure than aileron roll rate, if you know what I mean. The turboprop makes the turbine legend incredibly smooth in the air, and the 650 horsepower engine doesn't have to be treated with kid gloves the way a big supercharged piston engine does. The turbine legend is light and nimble in flight. It rolls about 120 degrees per second, and its composite airframe is stressed for aerobatics. The Walter engine can be flown economically at high altitude in cruise, or it can provide kerosene guzzling, heart pounding performance down low. It all depends on whether the pilot wants to fly like a fighter or a traveler. Dave Hirschman, AOPA Live. You can read more about the Turbine Legend in the September Turbine edition of AOPA Pilot Magazine. And wow, does that look like fun. It does, and it looks like it can be fun or, or practical, depending That's right. on the use. Yeah, very, you very used to get out of town if you want. <laughs> That's it for this edition. Join us next time for another AOPA Live this week. The AOPA World MasterCard delivers generous cashback rewards in all of your favorite aviation categories so you can do more of what you love, flying. And because every purchase helps to support general aviation, every cardholder is helping to protect the freedom to fly. Apply now for the AOPA World MasterCard, the best card for pilots.